Hello, my name is Greg Gill. I'm the editor of a specialist European private equity publication, Unquote. And we're here on day two of the IPEM conference in Cannes today. It is my pleasure to be joined by Gilles Colombin from Charterhouse Capital Partners. Thank you. Thank you very much for, uh, for taking the time to be with us today. From, uh, my pleasure. Taking a break from meeting investors and, uh, and, and co-investors yeah. <laughs> alike, I'm sure. Um, I think one of the main themes from, from this morning, yeah. really, as, as it should be, has been quite a lot of confidence in how the market has sort of shaped up in the, in the past few months. Very strong in terms of fundraising, in, in terms of investment activity. Um, do you expect that strong run of form to sort of continue as we enter 2020? I'm afraid yes. <laughs> now we do see that to continue, both on fundraising first. Um, it's been a very busy year last year, as we all know. But if you look at the start of the year already, if you look to any LPs, they'll be already really busy. And they will not believe that the year had just started a few weeks ago. And it is very likely to continue like this for many reasons we all know. One is interest rate, which push everybody in the world from Japan to Colombia to do even more into this asset class. So the shift toward private equity and the private market, but especially, specifically as well private equity, is here to continue. We, we do see as well, more on the business side, a shift from public market to private market at the low end of the business, you know, in the mid-market in which we operate. Last year, we took private tasks from uh, the UK stock exchange, and um, we, we will certainly do more of that as well, and because there is plenty of companies that you know are very happy to go private in order to be able to grow maybe a bit faster. You know, we, we did, regarding tasks, we did come exposium in the past in the sector, and this is a theme that we will see more and more in, not only in the UK, I think everywhere. I, I think potentially the, the flip side to having uh, all that capital kind of flowing into the, uh, the, the private market, even though I think, as, as you pointed out, people are a bit more creative when it comes to sourcing and perhaps looking at you know, private markets, uh, public markets, sorry, looking at uh, corporate carve-outs and all that sort of thing. I think one of the themes it has been that prices have, have crept yep. up a lot of competition for, for all the best assets. How do you sort of navigate that, that little conundrum at Charles House? Yeah. So we, um, we have several responses to that. You know, we all need to have, uh, there is the one response that everybody will have, which is more operational value extraction. So we do have now a portfolio team, which you know, we didn't have 10 years ago. And we've hired a team of seven people now who really is here to help both the management and the deal team to extract more value. That's something you absolutely have to do these days in our view, especially when you're focusing a bit more on the mid market as we do here at Charterhouse, because you've got a lot of value you can extract. So that's the first one. The second thing will be, um, this is very a theme which is kind of typical to Charterhouse, what we call the partnership deal. We do a lot of the deal that we do directly from funders, family management, try to do mostly off market as well. This is what we've done in this front end that we're currently deploying. And uh, this will help you to source differently. Possibly have the pricing being kind of control. It has a cost, massive cost, because you know the lead time is really long. It's more in years than in months. And you need to have more partners and juniors because it is kind of consumer of um, senior partners. But if you accept to bear that cost, if you accept as well to bear the other cost, which is usually these people will want to roll over with you, and this is nothing okay. Right? But you like it because that's how you go to this deal, and also how you get a bit comfortable about you know the seller not being a straight seller. So that's the second answer. The third answer will be strong focus on platform deals. Because these days, even if you know the the higher, the more expensive. You know, if you go to the large cap, which is something we are not really doing anymore. We are more focusing purely on mid-market. So mid-market is a bit better, but the low end is really good. So if you buy a platform and do a lot of Bolton acquisition, you know, for us, the Bolton acquisition on average are about seven times a bit down, where we'll have the platform at 10, 11. So you see that you immediately will have a pro forma, which is much better. So that's a topic that has been very, very strong at Charters. It's also why we have our partners focusing on this transaction for a long time before acquiring the business, then to be ready to be able to implement the buy and build. So it's really buy and build plus organic growth through the portfolio team. And all this together, if you accept to spend the time on situation before to buy it, you can source transaction which is a bit of the market. We call it swimming outside of the mainstream. <laughs> 
that's our big theme, and that's how we uh, we answer to that. Makes sense. And um, and speaking of uh, potentially taking a little bit more time to do things, but also the way that your firm has kind of evolved uh, from, from perhaps what, what it was historically. Yeah. I know one thing that's been of uh, increased focus for you guys has been co-investment. Obviously, right, a yeah. big thing in the market. Yeah. Yeah. I was interested in knowing how you sort of handle that at Charterhouse, knowing that it's now a big part of what you do. So for us, you know, it's in, there is. Uh, some benefit to the GP and some benefit to the LP. So benefit to the GP is uh, we love, like any business relationship, to have a two-way traffic. And having co-investors, the good thing is you've got a two-way traffic with some of your investors because you do things together. That's, that's a, the, the first thing. The second thing I will believe is additional intelligence. On deals, now LPs who do co-investment also have their knowledge of the market and all this. And so it's come to your you know, conviction building exercise. So that's a positive. Obviously for CLP, and, and for us, which is also for CLP actually, is a concentration of the fund. You know, fund management, fund construction of the portfolio is something that we cannot not do these days. We cannot issue that. It's, uh, it's, it's all very good to have a good fund, but if you know, you've got a couple of transactions which are a bit too big, it's, you know, whatever you do, whatever's your asset class, we all know it's not good. Before that, we would not have the tool to manage proactively this. Now with the co-investment, we can, so that's better for us, but it's much better for the LPs because you've got a better fund. And obviously the LP would do the co-investment, will have more concentration because then they decide to go into this additional asset in a bigger manner. Then, then they will have no fee, no carry, which is you know better terms for them. So it's, it's a balance that we're offering them, and for us, it's something that we do offer to the fund investors, which is a better constructed portfolio. Construction of portfolio, uh, it's key maybe thing. theme, looking you know, perhaps uh, in uh, slightly less explored corners in the market as well. A, a very theme for I think everyone in, in yeah. the market. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much for taking us to the us today, Gilles. Have a good um, conference. Thank you, you too. Enjoy the rest of the conference and thank you very much for watching. Thanks.